Welcome back to the Healthy Business Podcast. I'm Ty King with American Business Engine. With me today, as always, Jessica Tolliver with Cam Collaborative. Awesome. How are you? I'm great. Good. Yes. Playing hooky today with the kid. You get it. They're playing hooky. Oh, playing hooky yeah. with the kid. Oh, okay. He got straight A's, and oh, he asked for nice. for his reward. He asked for a day to go out and do stuff together. Yeah. I got rewarded down in the lobby when I walked in. They were like, "Hey, you want some fruit or yeah, that's a good bar? thing and I was too. Like, yeah, sure, why not? Hey, Million times I've walked in here, you never offered me before. <laughs> this is a, this is a suspect, you know. Yeah. So how's the uh, how's the week been going? Um, another day. Crazy as always, yeah. but it's calming down. We got past the race. We got past yeah. the, the last class we had scheduled, and now we're we had a week off for the school. Yeah. So we have streaming into the new part, the module. Great. And I've had just a l- five seconds to breathe. Has been nice. Nice. Five seconds <laughs> make can be the uh, the changer, you know. Yes. So I bought a. I upgraded my uh, old MacBook. Okay. So I you know went from so the one I was using was a MacBook Pro in 2016, mm-hmm. and it still used the silicone chips from Intel. And now I bought the uh, the latest the MacBook Pro that has the ARM chips, which is like Apple produces their own. So mm-hmm. inevitably, if you remember, you, you're an iPhone person, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you remember back when they were upgrading? I think it was to the uh, eight or ten, and then like, like all the older models started slowing down. Yeah. You know, just conveniently, then you would have to upgrade to the mm-hmm. new one. I think that's what's going on right now. I can't, <laughs> can't prove it. You know what I mean? But I'm pretty sure my old one is slowing well, down. Even if they're not intentionally slowing it yeah. down, just by going into the more demanding yeah. iOS, that you're just going to be taking more space, which kills well, your memory anyway. Kind of makes sense that every time they update the the OS, period, it's going to be aimed towards the newer mm-hmm. ARM controlled chips. And so yeah. Anyways, rendering these videos is so much faster now. Nice. So like I've been, you know, I mean, just mm-hmm. cut them up and put them on there really, Very really cool. quick. It takes like 15 minutes to render the whole thing and then I put it out there for the internet, Sweet. which is great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you said you had a subject for us today. I do. So we come here, we talk about things that we think and we do and we blah, but we've never actually done an interview. So I was going to interview you today. Interview you today. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is why it's a two part. Because next time I'm going to be interviewing you, is yes, that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to let you. I'm going to go ahead and put you on the spot here, and then oh, I'm going to give you a whole two weeks because next week we have an interview. Yes. Two weeks to think about your questions and really like dig deep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, excited? Great. <laughs> I get to think about my questions really deep, but the answers were. Like, oh, you right should now. know the answers. They're, 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 it's yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I do this a long time. So. So with so. me today is Ty King with American <laughs> Business Engine. How are you today, Todd? Good. How are you? <laughs> I am excellent. So I wanted to ask you some things. Your business is in marketing, mm-hmm. but it's deeper than that. You've actually got carved your niche in to come back from the automated marketing system, which is the way a lot of them are going, sure. and to do it a little bit differently. So I want to talk a little bit about the struggles you've had to forge your own way. So what you're basically doing is maybe not reinventing the wheel, but definitely reinventing what has already been invented and lost. Because mm-hmm. we used to be more hands-on, used to be more people involved, people-centered, yeah. and uh, relationship-centered, and then it got to all of this automation, and anyone you talk to now, you, they're like, I'm a marketer, yeah. let's put you in the, in the, in the automated system. Mm-hmm. And they want to make everything automated, which has its purpose. Yeah. Now, there's, I, we have a lot of automation in my business, but then I also like to put human stuff in the middle. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't actually doing that, but that's something that you've actually focused on. So I want you to talk a little bit about how you, uh, the struggles that you come across doing it differently. Doing it differently. Uh, I guess I'll go start with like how I got started on that path. Yes. So when I first started my first marketing business, um, I realized that I wanted to be more, uh, like you said, people-centered and like figure out some way that I could give value to clients and to get back to the community while also doing you know a great job at the services that we're providing mm-hmm. and so because um, you see a, a lot of companies that are always about coming in for this 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 and even when they have like you know um, I- events that are supposed to benefit the neighborhood or whatever mm-hmm. you know what I mean uh, it'll be right next to their cash register mm-hmm. and so like, <laughs> I was seeing that a lot and I was like well there has got to be a way because I was like well money's gonna come and fade and I know that sounds you know pious and you know just ridiculous but, <laughs> um, but like money you know comes and goes right like it is not permanent like you can you can make all the wealth in the world today and lose it tomorrow yes yeah because I completely out of your hands or mm-hmm. you spin it you know what I mean? yeah. um, 
So giving something that invests in people and like gives them you know, a little bit of hope, a little bit of you know something to help them change their lives for the better, mm-hmm. where they're positively impacted. That's the main. In, that's the main focus there. So okay. making human connections. And also, I've been around, you know, so many different lifestyles and even lived several different lifestyles mm-hmm. to where, like, I can help connect uh, the C-level executives of successful businesses, connect with somebody that's just a lowly person that works at Walmart because they have to have a job. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so, like, being able to make a connection, it gives them, it gives the C-level executive, uh, you know, uh, perspective, mm-hmm. helps them understand and it be more kind, I guess, to, to people and more understanding, more empathetic. Uh, and for the people that are you know at the bottom rung, then they also see well. Actually, this I've kind of been holding it you know against all these people that mm-hmm. I thought that they thought that they were better than me. But right. you know I mean, that type of thing. It's like no, we we can we can find some grass to relate on. So uh, marketing in itself, you know, uh, like a, we've talked about this a hundred million times about how they can just be, pop up out of nowhere mm-hmm. because there's no overhead whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to have any experience. All you gotta do is just start a Facebook page and say, hey, I'm a marketing company. Right. You don't have to register, you don't have to do anything. Exactly. Yeah, nothing at all. Literally anybody in the world can become a, a marketing company overnight. Um, the difference is your experience, and then when you start taking on clients, and then they realize, hey, you don't really know what you're doing, and you don't, you know? Mm-hmm. So even the pre- preliminary stages when you're like talking about what the project would be, how you charge, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we built ourselves rather than going the automated way because you know I've been building websites for 20 years now which sounds like I'm really really old but um, started when, so to be fair I started when I was 16 so yeah it's okay I yeah, am yeah. really really old yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's much different today than it was back then of yes. course because you don't have to code nearly as much uh, and like it, there's a pretty streamlined process of creating the website so uh, marketing, and in, in, so in Arkansas in particular, um, lots of businesses still believe in the power of word of mouth marketing, which is still powerful. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are even resistant against modern you know, ways of marketing yourself, technology online. Mm-hmm. And like I still get people that have been in business for you know, 20 plus years and they're just now coming to me for a website. Right, yeah. Because they didn't see any need for it back in the 90s. That's going to fade. It's a fad. Yes, yeah. exactly. Even the pandemic mm-hmm. didn't convince them when they had to shut their doors. <laughs> but now they're like, yeah, I guess we need to have a website. Everybody <laughs> keeps telling me i got to have this thing. You know what I mean? But they're not really seeing the value in it. And so help them walk them through the process. But then also, uh, so I network a ton. Mm-hmm. And I'm, when I'm networking, I'm not just networking for me. I also listen to when people are talking to me. And they're saying, well, if they're complaining about, you know, uh, Complaining about, let's see, their, their their housekeeper, or they're complaining about, you know, somebody that takes care of their lawn, or somebody that uh, they're looking for new ways of getting out there on, you know, advertising on TV. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. they, they want to be on the Vine. You right. Know, and stuff Everyone wants to be on the Vine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I'll be like, well, I know exactly who to con- connect you mm-hmm. with because those are some of my clients and network connections. So, mm-hmm. I'm not just listening for that magic word where it says I need a website or I need some social media marketing. I'm listening for everybody else. Right. And so that way I'm a people connector. And then they, were, they it, it works out. It's like depositing into the karma bank in the universe. Exactly, you know what yeah. I mean? It comes back to you. Uh, and usually the people that you refer over, like they appreciate you, the person that you referred to them, mm-hmm. like they appreciate that you made the connection. And so then they, you know, they have a favorable opinion of you. Mm-hmm. And then they will, next time they hear somebody that needs that, then they will work for you. So word of mouth. That's yes. how word of mouth works. And so like a combination of that plus online marketing because we've got two different uh, two <laughs> polar opposites right people that believe solely in word of mouth and people that believe solely in online marketing where you can be anywhere in the world and just writing up some messages and putting them out there with some images mm-hmm. and that's good enough but i don't think it's it so i think there's a happy medium and that's what we try to do mm-hmm. uh, which is you know of course it, your online life incorporates into your actual life mm-hmm. and making connections between people so the, uh, I guess the, the, the issues that we've run into before is that there's not a lot of uh, marketing companies out there that are doing this. Mm-hmm. So there are tons of marketing businesses out there and the majority of them are doing just completely online. Like mm-hmm. you may not ever meet the people that are actually building your assets for you. Okay, so 
uh, it creates an impression because, you know, by the time I get somebody, because usually they've been in business for a while and they've had experience with somebody in marketing. Mm -hmm. And so that impression is their impression of all marketing companies. Right. And so uh, me having to break down the, you know, those, those beliefs and uh, being like, okay, well, no, this, this is not actually how this works, you mm -hmm. know, for us. And I was like, everybody's different and mm -hmm. we may not even be the ones for you, but here, here's how we do things. And having to explain that, it's, uh, it can be a hurdle, you know. Mm -hmm. what I mean, it's usually not a, not a quick phone call. You know what I mean? It's yeah. usually us meeting over coffee or lunch, and then going back and forth. They have plenty of questions because they still just can't get over like what happened to them. And some of them are traumatized, mm -hmm. honestly, <laughs> because some of them, you know, they'll they'll pay a company uh, like Thrive or something to build their website for them because they don't want to mess with it. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, hear people that are like, "Trust us, we're the pros. We we know what we're doing. You just give all your stuff over to us and just pay us. We'll do it." And then when they're not getting the results that they want and they want to leave, they don't own any of the assets that they built for them. Mm -hmm. They don't own the website or anything like that. So I have to walk them through that process. Uh, be like, okay, you actually own this. I'll build it for you for doing this. This is actually yours. If, mm -hmm. Even if you leave my company, you go to somebody else, this goes with you. Right. So those are some of the hurdles that we you know, have jumped over. But yeah, for the most part, it's uh, well, that's exactly how I've grown my own company and you know, my own business and, and helps people. So like all the leads groups I'm part of, mm -hmm. all the networking events that I've even hosted or been a part of, like those have been huge in growing me, but also growing everybody else. And mm -hmm. so it's like, I'm just, you know, I want everybody to have a part of the, the pot there, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So like I want everybody to win. Well, that goes back to the, even, you know, Kim's philosophy about being more collaborative. You know, we are a community. Yeah. We all have our, our parts to contribute and, a lot of we've come it's because of a lot of the automation, because of the way society is, is grown a lot, we've really compartmentalized ourselves and our mm -hmm. businesses, and, and no one wants to share. Right. And it's I think it's less because they don't want to share, and more because they're kind of conditioned not to. Yeah. And uh, I love that you, you're breaking in there and you're saying, no, it's okay. I can refer you to this person, and I mean, I'm doing it because I want to help you. Yeah. Like I'm not getting commission, I'm not getting a referral right. kickback, I'm not getting anything like that. But I really think this person can help you. And that builds a lot of uh, credibility and trust. It does. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and see, so what else? I wanted to come up with some interesting things about your business because your business is a little unique. <laughs> and I don't think we actually dug into some of that. Um, I am having, I, I have had that problem. I, I counsel anyone who asks me, make sure when you're picking a marketer, you're picking someone to help you, make sure you own your product. Mm -hmm. Make yeah. sure at the end of the day, you know, you're not building on someone else's land because if you move, you know, you want to make sure that that you know you get a trailer that comes with you, as opposed to yeah. you know being as, as, as it belongs to them. Well, it's something that, it's something that people assume just comes along with it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so you don't think to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot if of if I buy you know if I buy a candy bar from the from the grocery store, I, don't, I assume that I own the wrapper too. Yeah. But if they they were like, hey, hey, that's ours. You got to take that out. You know, we're, give that back. And I'm like, what? I bought this whole thing. <laughs> and like, so it's the same kind of stuff. Yes. Now that's an interesting analogy because it's yeah. for sure. And and you're right. A lot of people run into that. They'll go and they'll get with a company that does all the things and it's great until it's not. And then either they change their situation, they want to take it in house, they want to do whatever, and they find themselves. Square one after having invested several thousand dollars into something right. they thought they were investing in for the long haul. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing. That's one of the things I learned early, early on. That that's make sure <laughs> make sure you own that for sure. Um, so as you've grown and mm. you've done your networking, you're starting to get a nice little niche. You're getting a reputation. Uh, what are some of the other struggles? I know that hiring has been something we kind of talked about a little mm. bit. We'll probably go into that a little bit deeper next week, but. Yeah. Uh, what um, what other things would you would you say that are struggles? And, and the reason I ask the question specifically is because a lot of people talk about how great they are. Yeah. They don't talk about what they struggle with. Mm -hmm. And I think the struggles are where we'll get an identity with some of our audience members. We can go, whoa, I, I, I struggle with that too. That's normal. Let's yeah. let's let's work through it. So what kind of struggles have, <laughs> have you had um, with hiring and, and with um, I mean with I know that you had you gone one way with your business and ended up having to make a separation sure. and, and rebrand it a little bit. Right. So talk about some of that. Yeah, I would say uh, some of the other struggles. So like one of the things, the main thing I would say is probably pricing. Mm -hmm. Because in Arkansas, like I said, that we, we value online marketing a little different than we value to do the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So when I build a website, I send it over to my friend in LA. She looks it over and she's a professional too. So uh, she will tell me, well, this is a little bit dated and, and this is like, and I'm like, okay. 
Arkansas just got started doing this. They just started getting comfortable with they this still because call. Arkansas is like eight yeah. years behind in times on technology <laughs> at all times. And they are, mm-hmm. and just it's just how we are. We, like we haven't evolved past that. We haven't caught up with the rest of the world. Like just, we're, we're always just retired to, DOS. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're always behind. So like putting your Instagram feed on your website, that's a new thing to Arkansas. Like they just started doing that last year, um, but it's been around for like a eight plus years yeah. and everywhere else. And so. Getting them comfortable. So, like, happen to find a place where I'm like, okay, I can't be cutting edge for the world, but I can be cutting edge for Arkansas. That's where I have to be, or else it's just too much. Mm-hmm. And they they, just, they don't understand it, you know. And so they won't go with the website because of that. Um, so pricing uh, is, a, is a little different here, too. Because of that way that they value it, they don't know. They don't think about, you know, how much is this going to give me as a return? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, if you build a website, it's not a guarantee that you are going to be making a million dollars in your first month. Mm-hmm. Okay? It takes a lot of work. This is just another asset. This is a hub where you want everybody to go to learn about you, but you've got to connect it to all your social media. Your mm-hmm. social media has to be active. You've got to have, you know, all your link trees or whatever it is that your QR codes, you know, that your marketing materials, your prints, your cards. You've got to have it all connecting to where it, it, it funnels everybody back to your website and then have an actual call to action. Mm-hmm. What, are, what is your main goal that you want them to do? You want them to contact you? Do you want them to buy a product from you? Do mm-hmm. you want them to you know, uh, send you some sort of information or fill out a form? That's got to be upfront and like focus on that. But um, so as I'm going through that, like they don't realize like what is the return going to be? Because mm-hmm. there's no guarantee right. how to do this. Um, but I always think about, so I was charged by the project, not by the hour. Mm-hmm. So a lot of marketing companies will charge by the hour. If you ever come across that, they either are amateurs or they uh, are underpricing themselves. Because, okay, so think about this story. So Nike, right? Uh, you know the little swoosh? Mm-hmm. Okay, so somebody designed that back in the, oh God, what was that, the 70, late 70, you know, 70, or 71 I think it was. This fresh out of college student designed this for one of her professors who was getting into creating athletic wear, and that was the creator of Nike, uh, Knight, I can't remember his first name. Um, and he paid her $35 for that swoosh. Mm-hmm. Now Nike is worth over $100 billion. And so did she get the worth? You know, because they're, they're putting that swoosh everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everybody recognizes that. And people will just put it on shirts without the word Nike on it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's, like it's it's everywhere, and everybody recognizes it. And they are, as much as they're using it, she only got paid $35. Well, granted, that $35 back then is equal to like $250 today, which is a really low underpriced you know, graphic design now. Like mm-hmm. So somebody you hire somebody to do your logo for you. Somebody's doing it for $250, that's for cheap. Um, so that was definitely cheap back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, but still, like, so that she didn't really price out, like, see, so when I'm looking at your company, I'm like, okay, well, how much are you bringing in? If I'm going to, if I'm going to redo the, the logo for Tyson, right? Tyson comes to me, Tyson Foods wants to have a new logo. I'm going to look at that and I'm going to be like, okay, well, same thing for your website. You know, if I'm rebuilding any of your assets for you, I'm looking at how much you actually build in, how much is this, like how much money is riding on this Mm -hmm. for your success. I want you to succeed, but I'm also not going to charge you $250 for a website when you're making billions and billions of dollars Mm -hmm. because that's ridiculous. Yeah, so. Well, I mean, the quality of the work has to match the the brand. Exactly. So if if you're coming in, you've got... You, you just got your license, or you just opened hung your yeah. shingle, or you just did whatever, and you're like, my company's name's you know Jessica's company, and I want mm-hmm. a logo. You go to Fiverr and get you a five dollar web you know logo. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But then when you start becoming Tyson, you need to go ahead and get that more expensive, the more time, the more investment, the more education to be able to properly represent. So I would say even in, in your early stages, if there's a potential of you becoming a Tyson or becoming a Nike in the future, because we've had plenty of companies like that in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had. We're famous for Walmart, right? But we also have Tyson, and we have you know several other f- foods and brands. And like mm-hmm. First Orion is another up and comer, mm-hmm. Aptigy here in Little Rock, and so like a lot of them are becoming multi million dollar businesses that are going into the billion dollar businesses, mm-hmm. right? Aptigy just got on uh, in Forbes magazine. It's one of the best places to work. Nice. So I mean, like yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went and toured their facility, and like I see what they're doing. It's great. So so something like that. So you are. You have an amazing idea. I'm not talking about like mom and pop shops that just pop up and we're, you know, we're selling our shakes or whatever. You know, I mean, it's not one of those. 
Um, but the, uh, the the companies that are doing actually things that are you know groundbreaking, we have a lot of technology companies that are popping up in Arkansas, like Central Arkansas, that mm-hmm. are growing national. It's crazy. Um, so I'm not going to charge you like I would charge a mom and pop. I do the mom and pop stuff because I have a heart for you know uh, small businesses, mm-hmm. of course, uh, and so I love have the, allowing them to have the same type of assets and you know quality as I made you know multi billion dollar company. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes a world of difference for them. Not a lot of people you know recognize it. You know what I mean? They're like, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever use this, but thanks. Um, but I like allowing them to have the same quality as, as the, the big guys. Right. You know, the big dogs and the little dogs have the same quality. So, um, but for like a, a company like that, if you were, had the potential of growing like that, I'm also looking at like, okay, well, how much are you going to be bringing in? How much are you going to be worth? Mm-hmm. Value? What is your net worth? And then I evaluate the project based on that. Mm-hmm. And so it's probably going to be, you know, quite a bit more than I would do for a mom and pop because I'm going to have to dedicate more time to mm-hmm. it. But like you said, and the guy, more eye of detail and making sure that all the parts work and I'm sure you're gonna have me doing the monthly maintenance and all that mm-hmm. stuff and so that we could you know keep on top of it so yeah that's so that's that's the uh, that's one of the things that it's, no, <laughs> it's pricing kind of a is a huge one that's one of the number one questions yeah. that you get as um, a service provider is yeah. how much do you charge it's not always industry standards right if you, to your point about Arkansas, if you go Google, you know, uh, social media marketing or mm-hmm. your marketing specialist, average salary or yeah. something of that nature, you're going to get a, a gamut. You know, yeah. What they're charging in New York is not the same as what they're charging in, you know, Boise, Idaho. <laughs> well, if you go, yeah, in Arkansas, even if you go to the U.S. Board of Labor Statistics on, online and look mm-hmm. up, you know, website designer it's way above what actual web designers are actually making. Mm-hmm. I don't understand where they got that median, but it's like it's ridiculous. It's like seventy thousand dollars a year, and it's oh, like man. nope, nope, that, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, like there are a few of us that are making that. Mm-hmm. But it's like for the most part, most of them are not making that now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the I don't know. It's interesting how there's a, a gap there. I don't know. It's it's so weird because like it's been around for the '90s, for since mm-hmm. the '90s, right? Website design, but like here, it's like it's still a new industry. Yes. It's so weird. And it's like it's the new thing to jump on, especially mm-hmm. during COVID. Everybody was like, "I'm gonna be a, a online marketer because that's what you can do from home, and I can wear my pajama hey, I, pants or no pants at all and I still be doing everything." I launched a couple businesses during COVID because I had nothing else to do, and yeah. I could work on the cheap because yeah. it's not really what I do for a right. living. <laughs> and this, they wanted something cheap. I had time. We worked together. It was great. Yeah. Um, but I don't have any desire to do that yeah. all the time. And you could, I mean, you could be a prodigy at it, right? And so, mm-hmm. but like, how many prodigies are out there that are starting marketing businesses? It's not very bad. No, 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 no. So, like, you are getting what you what you pay for, mm-hmm. and like, always research your person. How how much experience do they have? What where, where's the work? Look at the work from well, before. I was looking at tattoos. Much like a tattoo artist, look yeah. at what they've done in the past. Oh yeah. Look at you know, even if they have if, if they've never done, let's say you know, I have a massage business. Even if they've never done massage business, you can look at what other businesses that they've done and they're going to have, a company's going to have an aesthetic and they can switch it up for their clients but for the most part, especially for their smaller company and don't have thousands of designers, yeah. they're going to have a general, they're going to lean towards certain brighter colors or more muted colors or they're going to lean towards the, the more earthy or, or the, you'll just be able to see it. Or different a, styles too. Mm-hmm. Some of them like focus purely on like Japanese type of art. Exactly, like yeah. So look and see what they've done and make yeah. sure that's in line with what you like, what you find that exactly. would attract you because you are generally, like I'm not my target audience, but, uh, <laughs> but my, I know what my target audience is. Yeah. But a lot of times as a provider, you are kind of what your target audience is. You know right. what that looks like. So if you like it, then there's a good chance your customers will too. Yeah. Yeah, if you're looking at one of my, my so like a website that I built for an attorney or, you know, uh, a musician, mm-hmm. you know, like attorneys and musicians, that type of stuff, where mm-hmm. I get to be a little bit more artsy because they all want to be different from each other and mm-hmm. that type of stuff. And then you want me to design like your work from home cookie shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if we're going to have the same vibe because like I don't do pastel colors very mm-hmm. well. And like if you have that, this, this stuff is considered like very girly mm-hmm. type of, you know. Well, and if you get a developer or a designer that's doing that, that yeah. isn't into your aesthetic, then they're going to struggle. Yeah. And it's not that they'll do a bad job. It's just right. if you go ahead and say, okay, this would be great for my husband's business yes. or my neighbor's business, but maybe I need someone who's got a little more foo-foo in their background. Then a little more foo-foo. That's <laughs> 
so yeah, like a Molly Maid. A Molly Maid would not be my style at right. all. Right. I could not do that because and I just don't have that, you know, it's not my style at all. Well, and I love that you admit that because yeah. some marketers wouldn't. They'd be like, I can do all of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things that I really struggle that's, with. That's when you, that's a red flag. Yes. Anytime you hear anybody say that I can do anything off the, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, okay, well. What do you do? All of it. No, Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes for any provider. I yeah. mean, if you go to a, um, you know, a, a, a massage therapist, mm -hmm. a marketer, you go to, a, 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 your, even, even your, um, your, your, your doctors, I mean, if they say, like, I can do everything, like, well, yeah. no, I bet you can't. Yeah. <laughs> No, for sure. And like even my so like my style has always been, you know, I try to bend it. It's a, that's a struggle for me, you know, individually as trying to design for somebody else. Is that I'm naturally inclined to like even when I paint. So my paintings, I can do anything because they're for me, right? Mm -hmm. I love uh, like you know Tim Burton, right? Mm -hmm. So Tim Burton type type of style of art that is my stuff, mm -hmm. absolutely. The the darker, dark you know, edgy, yeah, dark and edgy type of tones. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so like. When somebody tries to hire me for a company that is so pretty bright and cheery, like that's just not my style. But I'll try to do it. I will try. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I've done that before. But like there are some where I just know, okay, this just is not for me at all mm -hmm. because I don't know how to do this. This is not my. You know, I'm or not, I just don't want to. I'm naturally inclined. Well, yeah, <laughs> as an artist though, you want to be. In, you have to be inspired. Exactly. You know, people don't realize that. So as you know, web designers and all that stuff. So we are artists, uh, and I do actual art. I paint and, and draw and all that stuff. Um, so like my, my style is inspired by things that I naturally like. I can't explain it. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm driven when I sit down in front of a piece of paper and I start putting, you know, the, the pencil to the, to the paper and whatever I'm drawing out is coming from my head, but I'm not doing it like, oh, I just want to draw, you know, big yellow sign over a mountain. <laughs> I'm not, I'm in not Bob corner. Ross. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not Bob Ross, you know what I mean? Like I'm drawing people with leaves coming out of their, you know, their yeah. faces and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know what I mean? So like I, I like that, um, but uh, I don't know. So like trying to trying to bend myself to be somebody else. You wouldn't hire, you know, Van Gogh to paint a Picasso piece. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't hire Picasso to paint, you know, uh, the Rembrandt. You know what I mean? That exactly. type of thing. So cool. Let's see. I think that's that's the nuts of it. Anything you want to add about your business? Uh, I mean, it's been, you know, uh, the, I, th I would say probably the biggest struggle besides the pricing part is just, you know, running it on my own. <laughs> We're getting to that point, like I said, and I've been looking, I've been trying to hire uh, and I'm thinking about an internship program this summer and so just trying to expand. Um, so yeah, doing, doing it all by myself, it, it gets, you know, extraneous when I'm having to do the services that I'm providing, plus going to these networking events, plus, you know, going to, you know, whatever awards events and that type of stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you've ever heard of expertise.com. Mm -mm. Okay, so they're, they're trying to take over for um, Yelp. Okay. So they are trying to, they're the new, new and upcoming website that's trying to overtake Yelp because Yelp is just, just like everything else was, right? Remember, um, Oh, Angie's List. Mm -hmm. So Angie's mm -hmm. List, and then Yelp came along and overtook them because Angie's List was getting saturated. Yelp, and now Yelp is getting saturated where you like, they pride themselves on being like, we can recommend you the best person for you, that type of thing. But then they're like, there's 47 but ads. money, you know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> they start accepting it for everybody else. And they're like, okay, they're paying us to do this. And so Expertise is the new company that's, that's trying to do this okay. again to, to overtake Yelp because of that. Anyways, we won uh, uh, one of the best web developers in, in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. So I, somebody nominated us. I don't know who it was. Um, and then we were approved. And so we're on the, the nice. site and all that stuff. I got to add a little badge to our website and all that stuff. So that's, cool. that's been great. So um, last week, we went to the Torch Awards at the, you know, the Governor's Mansion and all that stuff. And so I get, you know, I'm getting recognition mm -hmm. for what I'm doing. But but there's a fine I, line between being able to do and continue holding up yes. that, that networking part. Especially as you as you grow, mm -hmm. there's no possible way to keep being a single man operation at all. Well, so, I know. Yeah, you know that. I, I was know a single you know man operation for now. Now I'm a one and a half because I've yeah. got I got a person, but barely. I absolutely, 100 have to have some employees come in, mm -hmm. some people to work with me. So that's. And that's, that's a struggle. Not only yeah. for the fact that you need to find someone that can that can represent your brand. Mm -hmm. and be able to do the things that you want to do in the, in the yeah. way that you want to do them. But also find someone who wants to work. Yeah. These post-COVID um, employment stage is sure. crazy. Yeah. It's, I don't know, there's, I, 
I, I can't figure Everybody it out. Everybody knows. Everybody knows it's crazy right I now. just it's, don't. It's I don't understand. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I would say, you know, another rewarding part is just being able to hear the stories of people that are starting the small businesses mm -hmm. or, you know, a medium business, whatever they are. But you get to talk to the, the C-level executives and, and talk to them about, you know, how they got started. And sometimes it's because some trauma happened where they got divorced mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean, they had been in a, a bad relationship or, or, or got fired from a job and, like, maybe were harassed by their former boss and mm -hmm. then wanted to break out and do their own thing. And so those, those stories are really, you know, inspiring and, like, they help drive me to create great things for them mm -hmm. because I'm like, man, I love your story and I want right. to help you as much as possible. Um, so I just took on a, uh, a client. They're actually a, a North Little Rock police officer mm -hmm. that is starting a company that sells bounce houses. Okay. <laughs> That's I, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, yeah. Pretty specific and obscure. <laughs> it, it is very obscure, but I like those, those crazy selling, not stories. Renting. S yeah, selling. selling. He wants to be. Yeah, he's a I feel like I need seller. to get some pricing on a bounce house now. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Now you can own one. There you go. Yeah. I can own my very own. I have another house. room in here where it's just a bounce house room. Yeah, why not? Our clients can get the massage, <laughs> and then they can bring their energy out. And stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah it's full on, you know, holistic <laughs> bounciness. There you go. But that's cool. Go ahead. I'm interrupted. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, I love I love those stories, and that's why you know. It's part of the, the human connection that we were talking about yes. at the beginning and like building those relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I just, I used to be an introvert, believe it or not. And since I came out of Michelle, like I can't get enough of it. Oh, but I do have a social cool. meter. So if I'm talking to people for too long, it runs pretty low. Yes. And then I have to go into a dark room by myself and regenerate yes. after that. I understand that talking. completely. Yeah. There is a comedian and I can't think of his name right now, but he used to say, whatever obscure town he lived in, he says, well, the introverts stare at their shoes and the extroverts stare at your shoes. <laughs> That's, that makes perfect sense, yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you going yeah, no deeper problem. into the, the, the struggles of your business yeah. because I think it's the struggles that we, when we acknowledge those yeah. and we, we can learn from them as opposed to, we want to celebrate the wins, of course. Right. But if you don't, if you don't understand the past, you're doomed to repeat it. So if you don't really dig into your, your struggles and figure out how to overcome them and listen to people who've been down that road before, then it'll be a rockier road for sure. For sure. Well, we get to do this again in two weeks when I'm talking to you yes. about this stuff. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, I have to come up with some really good ones. I'm excited. Because you've already you've already thought about the answers of the questions you just asked me. Oh, that so I've got to come up with some some really you know some. That would require forethought, and I'm doing good to keep up with what's happening in the next hour. I've been like okay. really focused on remember this topic, remember this topic, because I thought it would be really interesting for the listeners to be able to go a little deeper. We've talked about what we do, but we haven't actually gone into a more of a, a linear chain of, of how that happens, more like little bits and pieces here and there. So. Yeah, like worrying about your sheep and where they're located. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it takes a, it's 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 a crazy world out there. No, I get it. it there's lots of distracting things in your life, but also when you're yes. trying to do business. And, yeah. Yesterday was my daughter bothering me uh, so that I could dye her hair. Okay. Oh, God. That was, what that color was crazy. Uh, so now it's uh, it's sort of a, I don't know, it's like a light blue, silverish blue. Okay. But we, we tried one bleach kit that was plant-based, and it did not bleach her hair. Right. And so we had to go with the chemical one, I and it bleached her hair. hair. Oh, it's like light brown. Okay. But anyways, then we had to bleach it the other side, and then made it real blonde. Then we put that stuff in there, and then now she loves it. But I mean, it's a that was a five or six hour process, you know what I mean? All while I'm trying to work. Well, I'm actually gonna go get my hair dyed today. That's why it's stained. Oh, are you? Yeah. This what afternoon. Color? Well, I've had it dyed before, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna have it dyed the bottom about four or six inches. It's gonna be blue. Okay. Like, like by a God blue. blue. Yeah. No, by God blue. Electric blue. What is by God blue? Like okay. Blue. Okay. <laughs> it screams blue with an exclamation mm -hmm. point. Electric blue. I'm gonna, gotcha. I, I had that done uh, right after we came back from COVID, and I loved it, but my hair was too long. Yeah. So I had it cut, and I'm gonna get the ends done. I'll be. It's either I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm being. I'm being me, or yeah. I'm having a midlife crisis. One <laughs> of the two. I'm yeah. just. I'm running with it. <laughs> all right. Well. <laughs> Tune in and see. Right. see. <laughs> so for all of you audio listeners yeah. out there, check back in. Is this in. the start of a mental breakdown or is it going to be life changing and like going to be a new level of Jessica? It could yeah, be. Yeah. I might, you know, y'all dye it out, get it blue, and be just you know, more exciting and yeah. 
Whatever, I don't know. Hey, either way, it's a fun <laughs> ride. <laughs> Absolutely. If you are a, a video watcher, then you can find us on any podcast services where we distribute this podcast across the globe. And if you're an audio listener, you can also find us on YouTube. Um, and you'll have to search for the Healthy Business Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, it says Ty King underneath, in case you're wondering. It doesn't say my name. It's not? No. Okay. Listen, I don't, I'm don't. i limited on my knowledge <laughs> on YouTube, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. That's okay. Okay. Um, it might be just be the people that are like admins that are on it. That's, I don't know. I'll check into it. But anyways. Like and share. Yes. Like <laughs> and share. All that stuff. The, the things. The, all the things. Um, so yeah. Uh, next week, hopefully have some interviews with mm-hmm. the payroll company. Mm-hmm. And then the next week, we'll have an interview with Jessica. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So okay. excited. Okay. Until next time, you want to say bye? Bye. All right. And keep your business healthy.